Good morning. Can y'all hear me? What? That was some beautiful praise and worship, wasn't it? Man, I, I love that. Rudy and Jessica, they're so uh, they're so awesome to have with us all the time. Um, y'all give them a hand real quick. Thank y'all so much. It's always an honor. We had so much fun. We always have fun with them, and this time we actually got to spend time without the everybody running around. Yeah. So we had a good time. So we uh, we are we are honored to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, let's give Jesus a hand this morning. What a powerful anointing. Year three, done. Paul said, forgetting the past, and he said, I'm reaching for to the prize. So guess what? Year four and 24, let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Vision Sunday. I'm so excited. See, I, I'm so excited because it took me years, as even as a pastor, to figure out what vision was. I, I thought vision was something different. You know, I, I always thought vision was something that um, that 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 was like you have to just get everybody on board and like you have to run the race as soon as possible. That's not the case. The vision is a slow process, but it's a powerful process. It's a process that goes along with your calling. It was predestined before you were even born. The vision God gives you is something that does not develop. Let me explain something to you. It is an anointing that is upon a church. It is an anointing that is upon a ministry. A vision is a specific goal given. No one else in the Bible other than Paul had the vision that God gave him. He wrote 90% of the Bible. He suffered. He went all out. And he was a thug against Jesus. Do you understand me? The Lord made a picture out of that man and the man changed the world and wrote 90% of the Testament because he gave him a specific vision. So vision is very important. The vision may not be exactly what you think it is. Vision is not a big ministry pool. It is not a brand name. Let me explain something to you. It is not none of that. That is not what it is. A vision is an ordained statement that God specifically puts on a man or woman's heart to reach one soul to change eternity. That is all it is. That is all it is. It's up to you how you want to make it happen or how big you want it to do because God says, you ain't waiting on me. <laughs> Y'all ready to pray this morning? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this powerful, powerful anointing this morning. We thank you, Lord, for three years. We are so grateful. We look back at the miracles and we say, thank you, Jesus. But I am, ex I am, I am, I am on my knees and I am asking you, that year four be the most powerful we've ever seen. And I'm asking you for miracles, that you are still in the miracle working business, and I'm asking you for that one soul. And I thank you, Lord, that the vision is in tune. I thank you, Lord, that we are on the foundation. And I thank you, Lord, that when we speak these words today, we are loosing things in heaven that will be loosed in earth, and we are binding things in heaven that will be bound in earth in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you. Well, good morning. Look. I'm sorry I shaved my beard a little too high. Check it out. So I told Christina I look like a walrus with this mottled hair, and I'm on a like an ice island, and I'm like this. She was like, yeah, it kind of looks bad. And I was like, it had split ends. Like my beard, I picked one out, and it had five split ends. And I'm like, babe, you are a hairstylist. My beard does not work, so I just took it off. So I apologize when the light hits the wall of his throat. That is not my fault. But I hope, hey, anybody like how the new the church looks? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Let's give a hand to all those people that work so hard. Thank you so much. Boy, you know, one thing about it, the Lord loves excellence. And that's that goes along with it, excellence and everything. So I'm so excited. Thank you all for working on the church. Uh, we got fresh swag. I got my fresh swag on because I got my shirt dirty. So, hey, man, we got backup hoodies. And so, guess what? It's comfortable. Get you some swag. It all goes to world missions. Right. Let's do that. So, all right, I want to get started, man. I'm so excited. I am a vision-minded pastor, period. That's all I am. I don't, I don't preach it all the time. Um, you see it a lot, but you don't really hear it. But today, I want to specifically talk about vision. Is everybody ready? 
Uh, I'm coming out swinging and banging this morning like DJ Screw, baby. I'm, I'm, I got, the Lord said, this is what I'm telling you. What it, the, Lord, the Lord gave me specific words today. This is a very serious message. I like to play around. I got to make y'all laugh. But today, the Lord said, when you proclaim, things are going to change on the earth. So I'm excited. And you know that lukewarm Christian approach, I'm telling you, is out the door in 24. It just ain't going to work no more. Like, you know, we, we don't got away with it too long. It's time to get on with it. It's time. And you all know it's coming. And, and, you know, here's the deal. Did you know that you hold the power to change eternity forever? No, I, I, I don't think you really heard me, though. Do you know you changed the power to hold eternity in your hands? You're like, what are you talking about? If you change one soul, just one, for eternity, you have done more than any businessman has ever done in the world, if, any billionaire, the Tesla guy, I don't care what you say, what you've ever done in your lifetime material-wise is nothing compared to taking one soul to heaven with you. And if you cannot fathom that, then you are coming to church, you are serving, and you are doing your Christian walk the wrong way. Because there's a lost soul in here today. And so as we preach, that lost soul in here today is going to hear also what they can accomplish in their life. Just like a no good, pill addict, alcoholic, dirty, suicidal pastor, I am up here now because of the grace and the mighty mercy of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, he puts vision in your heart because he takes the low things and he says, I'll make them the simple things and I will confound the world because I will bring the nasty, no good, hopeless thing that people throw to the trash can and I'm going to bring them up with a miracle working power and I'm going to change the world if it's only one soul. If we have to preach the truth from the pulpit, it starts right here in 24 to change the world. Do not fear those who kill the body, but those who kill the soul is what Matthew said. Why did he say that? Because your life had a beginning, but it does not have an end. What? Because souls matter. You see, the thing about a soul, it lasts forever. So don't come tell me about abortion this year. You better vote according to your uh, Holy Ghost uh, leading. You better vote according to the Word of God. Let me explain something to you. When a soul is born into this life, it lasts forever. When a soul is birthed and it is still in there, growing, it is still a live life. So when you come out on national television and you don't give a rip about abortion and you're standing firm like never before, let me explain something to you where we are in this world. Do you think I'm going to come up here and hand you some candy sermon? Do you think the sermons are going to get more intense? As Christians, we are all called to save a soul. That's it. When's the last time you shared and you made sure that that person did not leave knowing the full gospel? Then what are, you, what are we doing? Why are we Christians? That's my question this morning on Vision Sunday. Then what are we doing it for? I, I, no amens. And like, that, that's a, that it was a mouse toot moment where you could have heard a mouse. I think I heard a roach scurry at that pause. It's going to get better. I'm not beating y'all up. I'm pumped up. It's Vision Sunday. But as you, I got to tell the reality of the truth, though. And as you can see it, there's a little card. Does anybody show me your little card that you got this morning? Did you read that? Do you know what that is? Have you ever been to church that passed out a card that said, this is what Jesus gave us to do? Have you ever been to a church where somebody handed you a card and that says, this is what Jesus put on my, do, uh, put on my heart to do? And I want to hand it to you. What you think? That's what we did this morning. You see, the Bible tells me to write the vision down plainly so people can run. Guess what? It's in your hand. Now you can run with it. Now you have no excuse. I've let you make it. But now, next week, I'm going to be like, oh, what's the vision? 
Preacher the Gospel Simply back. He's going to go off. Hopefully. We're going to test you next week, Augie. Each card has the vision statement of Hill Country Life Church. And it was, a, it was what the Lord gave us to build the first steps of faith and this amazing foundation that we're sitting at this morning. That's so cool to me. And the, the words on that card were written with lots of prayer, a desire in our heart, and, and believed by pure, pure faith. And guess what? The prayers were given for your life. And guess what? Here we sit. Do you see how that works? Do you see how that works? Somebody cared for you. Somebody said, all right, there are some words that the Lord gave me. I'm going to put that in my heart. I'm actually going to believe the words that he gave me. I'm actually going to grab the words that he gave me. Then I'm going to go apply them to the word of God. And then I'm going to see how they line up. Then I'm going to go see how he did it. Then I'm going to go see how he taught his disciples to do it. And then I'm going to see how he did it to launch it out into the world. And then I'm going to see how he did it to perform miracles. And then I'm going to see how Jesus did it to, to go and preach the word. And then I'm going to see how Jesus stayed humble. And then I'm going to see how Jesus said the servant is the greatest. And then I'm going to see how Jesus washed feet when he didn't have to because he could have called down a legion of angels to set him apart right there. Let me explain something to you. The gospel is something that you have always thought that maybe it is just this. The vision is way bigger than what you've always thought thought and the gospel is way bigger than you could ever fathom a vision of this church is simply this it conveys what God desires to see in the future for our church it is what the ultimate goal is that's the vision it's that simple Can everybody say amen a solid vision is simple it's crystal clear and most importantly lines up directly with the word of God and a good vision is always centered on the gospel of Jesus Christ I want to start with sharing our vision our vision, grab your card. It says, preaching the gospel simply, loving people relentlessly, fearlessly growing and discipling, and lastly, taking Texas and the world for Jesus. Come on, give somebody a hand clap for that. So you see how simple and crystal clear that is. Do you see that every week by what we do, it could be one, it could be state night, it could be preaching, it could be uh, ministering, it could be a conference with somebody, it could be somebody giving somebody a text, it could be somebody praying for somebody, it could our interceders in there praying for you. That's the vision. And all of it comes around because every little aspect of your serving in this church all goes, that percentage all goes to that one next soul that's going to get saved and change eternity forevermore. It's patterned off the one who created the pattern. The one who shared. Uh, it, it, Jesus preached the gospel. He loved passionately. He was fearless. He discipled. And then he said, go out and take the world under my name and I'm going to give you the power to do it. And lo, I'll never leave you till the end of the age. I said, well, let's do it then, baby. Give me a logo. Put up a, a windmill. Name it something in the hill country and just give me a Bible and let's get our friends and let's do damage. And that's where we sit. Now we have a beautiful church family after three years, a solid foundation. Jesus said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. But guess what? The vine's been laid. Now we're branching out. And the Lord gave me a word from the Lord, and I'm going to share it in closing today. The most powerful word I've gotten from the Lord in four years as a pastor of this church. And he said, I want you to share it on Vision Sunday. But let me explain something to you. There's something in the Bible it's referred to as great. By theologians. It's called great. It's possibly the greatest passage. Why do you say that? Because it covers the last time Jesus had to teach and it's truly expressed his heart. He said before he ascended to the Father, he sat down with them and he said, let me explain something to you. And he goes off and he starts sharing with them. Hey, the servant is the greatest. Listen, you, got, you were taught. You know what to do now. Listen, I got to go but I'm going to be with you. But don't trip. I'm going to send a helper and you're going to be happy because when the power comes, you're going to change the world. Matthew 28, 16, but the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus has designated. Jesus designated a spot. He said, I've designated a spot at Hill Country Life Church for the anointing to change the lost and the hurting in the Hill Country. He told me that was the first thing he showed me. He said, Jesus came up said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore 
and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even till the end of age. That's what Hill Country Life Church is patterned off of. We are teaching what Jesus said. Teach them of me. Go out and get them and baptize them in the Blanco or put them in the cattle trough. Because I don't give a rip. You just give me some water, baby, we're going to get down. And you're going to go all the way under with Eric because he's mean like that. <laughs> and you best hold your breath. He might hold you down into there about three seconds. He told me, oh, yeah, I got to make sure, you know, they went under, baby. Submerge We don't sprinkle around here. This is not what they did. He said to duck them when they come out, they left it in the water, and you are a new creation in Christ. Sick and tired of everybody being beat down in 24. I can give a rip what the government's going to do. You think I give a rip? God is in control, and let me explain something to you. His hand is still mighty that holds the world, and let me explain something to you. He is still on the throne. Now you pumped up. Yeah, it took y'all about 10 minutes because y'all were all donut coma. It's my birthday. We gonna eat donuts like it's my birthday. We gonna drink bangs, get our juice drink. Like... Bet that's what Beth was doing this morning. She was. Happy birthday, girlfriend. The verse is powerful. Habakkuk 2.2, 2, the Lord told me, I will give you the message in the form of a vision. Write it down clearly to be read at a glance. You did that this morning. Now the vision's in your heart. You don't have an excuse. Investing and enhancing in the kingdom, one precious soul at a time. Thank you, Jesus. But there are tons of jobs that have to take place to fulfill this and do this right. You're like, oh, here he goes. That's why each of us were created, though. The Word of God said each of you were created with specific gifts. I cannot do what Teresa does. I cannot do what Susie does. I cannot do what you do, sweetheart. I can do this. I can't do administration. I can't get up here and sing like Rudy and Jessica. All the strays in Blanco would be howling. The cats would be running from the back. The coons would be like, what is that? I wake everybody up. So how can I apply my gifts and servitude towards the vision of my church, Pastor Charlie? Sign up for something and do it with your heart. Donovan, set up a steak night. Boy went off. He did it with all of his heart. I mean, he was asking 30 questions, making it right. I said, that's excellence. I like that. That doesn't bother me. If you want to make it right, I'm seeing you're doing excellent as you're serving. You ask many questions as you want, bro. But I know you did a good job. And see, but everybody has that. Everybody has that. I went and encouraged my prayer team this morning. I said, man, that is so important. That is way more important than what I do behind the pulpit. I said, thank you. Keep on. Rock it. Change lives, baby. How can I apply my gifts? Hey, sign up and do it, man. Look, vision, it, vision covers a lot, like I said when I started. It's not just a church vision either. Y'all ready? It's part of a greater vision. See, you have to first have vision in your Christian walk. Why do you think I'm preaching on focus, 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 setting spiritual goals in 24? You have to first have clarity and vision in your Christian walk. Second, you have to have clarity in your marriage or relationship. Third, you have to have clarity in managing your family according to the Word of God. And fourth, serving. It's that simple. It's that simple. It, it, it really boils down to that simple. And to be part of a greater vision... The, then, then, then your final goal is to grow into a useful, productive, holy vessel for God's work. That simple teaching. Did you get that? Y'all got to say something. Say amen or something. Wake up. I'm coming. It's going to get good. Vision in your life according to the word of God. Guidance in. Here's the key by the Holy Spirit though. See, you cannot become more like Christ daily if you don't listen to the Holy Spirit. You, 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 you're just not going to do it. So you have to learn to do that. 
And, and also, when you're serving, rely on the same power that keeps you as a Christian. you got to say, i got the power of the Holy Ghost to do anything that the Lord has said I can do. And if it's His name, all i got to do is ask, do you not think that He won't give that to you? It's in His will. You ain't asking for a Benz or the new Bronco. You know what I'm saying? Lord Jesus, I want the new Bronco by Friday at 10 a.m. I mean... Pray it, man, whatever, I'm with you. I'm kind of, <laughs> but I'm more with Lord. I know there's one out there crying that woke up this morning that probably may end their life. That's the one I want this morning because I know you're seeing them already. And give me the eyes to see the same. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. And a set of goals to intermediate almost totally. I set some goals this year. I'm so excited. I set some goals. Pastor say, Pastor set goals. I'm at 161. I've lost 15 pounds. I've cheated a couple times. Not as bad as everybody else in my crew. I ate half a potato yesterday, but that's all I ate was a little steak. But I wanted to be 155 by Easter, dude. I set a goal. Right? It's fine. You know, I ain't looking all like this. <laughs> like a pregnant, you know. Like, hello, good morning. <laughs> yes, it's, it's not going to work for me. Give me my new swag and let me get up here and let me lose a little weight, you know. But you have to set goals. It's the same thing as a Christian. You have to set spiritual goals. Just like I set that goal, physical goal for myself, do the same in your Christian walk because you ain't set no spiritual goals in 10 years. And you wonder, well, I don't know why nothing's moving in my life. I can't muster up the faith, Pastor. Well, you know, it's like, okay, I mean, like, you must find some vision. Maybe you just need some vision, bro. Right? Moses walked around for how many years? And then he walked around again for how many years? I could keep going on. Y'all want to keep going? Get some vision. And when you get it, do not go left or right. Because the problem is he went left or right. You stick with what he gave you. You must find some vision in your life. A blind lady said it once well. A blind lady said it well. She said the most pathetic person in the world is someone who has sight but has no vision. That was Miss Helen Keller. That's a powerful quote from a woman that could not see. But the woman was very powerful light. She makes some very stout quotes, but she got the idea of it. She goes, just because I can't see, I got more vision than you. She was like, get you some boy. <laughs> she was probably sitting there like Ray Charles, get you some. <laughs> Talk about the vision, point number one, taking a look at ourselves. The very first question I ask myself, in all things pertaining to ministry in my Christian walk as a pastor, are you pastor moving in the vision? Are you moving towards the direction of the vision? There are many great church visions, but if the vision isn't core of who you are, let me say that, if the vision isn't core of who you are. I was talking to Augie. He was talking to me yesterday. He said, man, I went to the church, man, I, was, I just wasn't feeling it. But I came here, and y'all were like a little ghetto. <laughs> so he's like, I'm in. <laughs> Praise Jesus. See, he made me to do that. Now we got Augie. I'll take Augie. He's cool. He seems good. He's handsome. He's articulate. Got to get him a hot wife, but I'm praying. This is the Lord's vision that always has to be the forefront of any decision, that his will be done, not mine. It's, it's the Father's business. That's what Jesus said. The Father sent me, the Father sent me, He is one, but i got to do what He called me to do. I don't care what you say, I don't care what you say. I've already been to the houses of the tax collectors and the prostitutes. I've already been to the houses of the top Pharisees. I already know what's going on, but I don't really care because I came for every one of them. That's the vision. CB, I just wouldn't fit in with the backward collar churches. Could y'all see me up in the front row? I mean, I, I'd be like a monkey with a diaper and a leash. You wouldn't be able to contain me. He'd be like, 
the other, you know, man, I just wouldn't be able to stay there in one of them churches that are just, you know. And so I've tried all, I went to 27 local churches before I pastored here. You were like, oh, pastor, you're a church hopper. No, I was going to check it out for real. I was like, we're going to check it out. Go check it out. There was a lot of great churches, some not so great. I'm going to be honest. I didn't dig some of them, some of them I loved. I preach at them. I love them. I preach at cowboy churches all the time. You know, I mean, that's cool. It's not me, though. My church is, is, is when I envision church and going to church, I want to see all kinds of different people. That's just me personally. I'm not even talking about our church. or I want to see, I want to see black folks. Come on. I want to see my Mexicanos. I told Armando, don't come around the corner with a knife in your hand. Mexicans can't carry knives in this church. Bro. He's like, Pastor, I don't want to fool with you. I just woke up from a nap and I don't have to. Probably not socially acceptable, but Armando, we talk to each other like that. We're ex-homeboys from the streets, bro. Kind of like country street homeboys. Let me explain that. I really, but you know, I enjoyed many of these churches, some not so much. But what I did realize is so amazing about the body of Christ was the diversity. Then I said, you know what, this is cool. So send me to the cowboy churches. I'm going to go drop it like it's hot. And when I walk out, I'm going to walk out like I just won the World Series and get up in Christina's deal. And she's going she's gonna to chauffeur me home. And I'm going to be like, baby, I dropped that. Yes, you did. You told me six times. Well, I might tell you seven. Grumpy britches. You try to get up there and preach in front of an audience. You know, then, then we get to that conversation, you know. We are a church that says to all people. We even let Paul come to church. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> find where you're at. Dude, find where you fit in and just feel comfortable. Just that's it. That's all I'm saying. Go find where you're a local. Pit. Find, get stabilized, and, and it's time to do that in 24. I'm telling you because what's coming in the world, find you a good local church. Get stabilized. Get solid. Get, get ready, just, just you've got to settle yourself down in there. He called our church to preach the truth and let the chips fall where they may. And if you hang, we will love you like never before. You will be trusted. You will be worked with. You will be cared for. You will grow. And let me explain something to you. You're going to eventually serve in some capacity because we don't pull punches. But here we go. The real love is truth. It ain't just words at this church. In action, the actions of love are supported by truth. That's why we can put truth 24 on the wall. And all you are a part of that. Give yourself a hand. And then let's say, thank you, Jesus. But see, don't be so desperate to see God do something and that you have to copy or paste what another ministry is doing. I am not Bethany. I'm not. Those people have beautiful hair. They wear skinny jeans, bro. They, 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 they look like they went to Bible school for 48 years when they speak. It's like, I, I love it. I am connected. But it ain't like, I, I don't know if I could be in that calling, you know, because he called me to something else. And I don't know if y'all could be in a different church because specifically God has called you here. And you feel comfortable. Like, if you're struggling to do it, it's not God. If it feels good... Church got to be fun, bro. Like, you got to come to church. You best come expecting and leave happy. I'm sick of people coming to church uh, leaving the same. And don't blame me. You can sit at your pity party and have no vision the rest of your life. I'm going to try. I'm going to work with you. But you're going to have to do it on your own, ladies and gentlemen. See, many don't stick to the original game plan. Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, the people are unrestrained. It said the people perish, spiritually die. Always go back to the original game plan. Everybody say this, run with it. Run with it. Say it again, run with it. Run with it. When you're leading out a vision... It is authentic to your calling. You can keep repeating that vision for years and years and you can still keep the genuine, genuine excitement. I've seen churches change their vision, change their names. They just had, they were just to and fro. Yeah, here and there. It's like, 
what are you doing? Like, the Lord did not give you that when you originally started. Go back to where he spoke to you. Write it down. Spiritual goals. Is anybody getting some teaching? How can you apply this? God gives you something. Write it down because that's a spiritual goal he wants you to accomplish in 24. It's just like a vision. Once you establish a vision that burns inside of you, then you get the church together and launch a church, and here we sit. It is where we sit today, starting year four, and with a pretty solid foundation, I might add to, and I'm pretty proud of it. It just takes time, peeps. The Lord said, be careful. I said, what do you mean? He goes, because you've done so well, wait on me. I said, okay, I'm waiting. I ain't getting in no hurry, you know. I mean, I'm not getting in no hurry. I mean, Becky just got saved, and, you know, we got to help her. I mean, my point is, you know, the, the, uh, Psalm 20 says, Psalm 27 tells me to wait on the Lord. And then it stops and says, dit, 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 wait patiently on the Lord. I'm like, Lord, I'm ready. Like, you've got to start, you know, three years, I'm ready to roll. And he said, it's okay, son, be patient. So, my question to my family first is, are we in line with the vision? That's what we t- discuss every week. So we have to keep that. Are we uh, actually accomplishing this weekly? Do we just read uh, the Word of God? Do we just read the Great Commission or are we putting it to use? If you decide to reach others and and we are called uh, by His plans, then we cannot form a clique of a country club church. We cannot do that. I don't want to form a clique of a country club church. I want a church that is open where people just keep on getting saved. And if they roll, thank you, Jesus. But at least we'll contain some and and keep building that foundation. Is everybody with me this morning? I'm going to skip on down. I got to get, get, I'm way off. Like bad. Like we got some work to do. Matthew 24, 14. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. But listen, the gospel is only good news if it gets to people's lives in time. Let me say that again. It's only good news if it gets to people's lives in time. That's why I'm preaching with fervency this morning. Point number two, y'all ready to move along? Kingdom vision stakeholders. Can you say, I'm a stakeholder? Say it again. Each major investment these days has major stakeholders, right? A stakeholder is an invested party that's impacted by the outcome of a venture and is a crucial part of a venture. A stakeholder in a ministry vision is somebody like each of you today. A church's stakeholder group consists of core attenders. It consists of high-capacity volunteers, board members, and leaders. That's what we have going on right now. So, I'm going to skip down. The vision must be pumped nonstop, and we have to stick to it. And we live by it. It's clear in our all-in class. At men's steak night last night, people are going to sign up for all-in class. We got one coming. I did not realize how many of y'all had not done all-in classes. Sign up at the connect table before you leave. We're going to have one after Easter. It's very important. We will feed you. It don't take long. It's three Sundays, and you get to go home, and you're fed. Stakeholders like you are the group that you can drip the vision to. Are you understanding? You drip down the vision. And then they say, Pastor, let's do this. Okay, find somebody to do it. Okay, we got this. We'll do it, and then we'll find some people. It's just you keep dripping the vision, and it keeps moving. The vision burning in all of our hearts will allow us to act as advocates to the rest of the community, too. They can see those people go to Hill Country Life Church. I remember that dude. He gave me a backpack full of supplies. I remember that dude. He prayed for me and gave me a hug and gave me his number and said to holler at him anytime. I remember that dude. That's what we have to do. That's the vision. I'm I'm wrapping up. Y'all look sleepy this morning. And probably I would say um, that one of the best ways to know if your stakeholders have brought vision into your ministry is to hear them pray. And I can honestly say that they pray the vision. I listen in all the time. I'm like a little sneaky. I'm like, I'm going to listen in and see what they're doing. I was like, well, that sounds good. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa, she had a little too much coffee this morning. I'm just kidding. On Sunday after church, uh, everyone wants to stand in line and talk to the pastor. But listen, listen, 
But they will have common, they will have conversations with you, church members. Listen, it happens every Sunday. And ask their thoughts. That's why you have to have the vision in your hand. Learn it, memorize it, and live it. Hey, guess what? We have the vision cards. Let me just tell you what our church is about. It is very simple. And let me explain how this church has changed my life through the power of Jesus Christ. Hand them a vision card. Oh, wow, this is cool. I don't even have no family. My family's in Delaware. It's perfect. Well, why don't you come to Easter with me? All of a sudden, you have a new friend for life. You change eternity for life, and then you have a new church member, and y'all are little besties, and you're tight, and you got Jesus at the center of it all. Is that good? Is this simple? You get envisioned? You set yourselves up to win when you equip your stakeholders to answer these questions. You give them the process, and they can get on board and say, hey, this is what we're about. We all about this life. Like what you said, boy. I said, I'm all about that Jesus life, boy. Back, <laughs> back to the command given. An important one. So important that it was given right before Jesus sent it back to the Father. It says, I want us to rediscover the real meaning today of the Great Commission. It's the compassion for the lost. It's crying for the lost. It's weeping for the lost. It's going out and getting that one and bringing them in and loving on them and building a foundation in their life. And as we have already seen, the Great Commission is not something that was just given to a, a tiny group of specially trained men. They were given it to rough outlaw men like myself and Cat. Cat <laughs> used to be to live a thug life, I'm telling you. She told me stories, and I was like, I think you have me beat. <laughs> and that might not be something to be proud of, but Jesus changed his lives, right? <laughs> Remember, it's our mission to fulfill the vision you are a part of. You have to look at it like that. Serve with joy knowing that Jesus is moving on somebody's life. Did you catch that? You serve with joy. Well, Pastor, I opened the door. Then good. Because the, the Bible tells me it's better to be a gate, uh, house, uh, a gate opener in the house of the Lord. And so just enjoy that because you're the first one people see. You make an impact on people. Well, Pastor, I don't know if I'm meant to pray. Well, guess what? I called you and told you I don't really care if you feel with the Holy Ghost. Get back there and pray, and then you keep doing it. You keep doing it. You keep on. You keep stepping into faith. And then whatever you think you have the faith for, it'll come. But I'm believing with you, boo. And my point is here, you got, you got to understand the vision is like little things. Like, like Rudy coming over on an important event. That's a big thing for me because I can be led into a powerful anointing. Because it just happens that way. I wish they could come over here with us. But my point is, see how that happened? It's every, that was a perfect example of somebody coming in to the body of Christ and injecting a gift that God gave them. The anointing gave and changed, and it was all in line with the body of Christ and the word, and then the anointing just ups. That's all the vision. It's all lined. Each one of you has those. I've got to move on. I am running late. Luke 27, 29, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he said, you will receive power in Acts 8 from the Holy Spirit, and it will as come upon you. You shall be my witnesses in both Blanco, Texas, and the United States, and all the remnant part of the earth. I said, yes, sir. I can do that. And that's what we will do. A vision minded says capturing Jesus' last teaching to reach the one for him. Put the need to the, you know, we got to put the need of the world. In, and sometimes we get caught up, don't we? You got to put the, you got the little desires of your life. You got to kind of set that aside and die to yourself sometimes so you can do what God called you to do. Right. It's okay to do that because the blessings come with it. Quit missing them. And there is a power in you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will counsel you. He will give you game plans. He will give you intercession prayer. He will give you the power to save souls and to turn back the gates of hell. Pastor, I don't know about that praying and tongue stuff. Let me explain something to you. If it turned back the gates of hell on a life today, I really don't care what you think. Point number three, you're calling. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> the purpose of a pumped up vision Sunday like this is to, to find your calling. It, it, just to make it clear, say, Lord, show me what's up. But you're not going to find your calling unless you try, Miss Becky.
All he said is, we're, all he's calling you to do, he said, hey, I, I brought you to a church with a cool pastor. He's super cool. No, I'm just kidding. He's a weird little preacher, but listen to me. I got you there. He needs your help extremely bad. And so just seek me. That's all he's telling you today. Philippians 3.13, I do not regard myself of having, have, having laid hold of it yet. Paul said, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. But I'm doing my best, peeps. Because I'm sticking to the vision. <laughs> if I stick to the vision, then I'll be okay. The Lord will help me do everything else. That's all you got to do is this good teaching. Somebody say amen. amen. See, and I know it's frustrating to you. And the Lord gently corrected me and said, you got to be more of a better pastor to let people get more spots to serve. I said, yes, sir. Thank you for gently correcting. So if you want to serve, holla at me. I got you. You pick my serve too. And if you would like, that was an agreement we made. If you would like, see, I always make people hang on to their words, so I don't forget. Eric owes me $8, too. Um, if you would like to serve, holler at me. You see, the first step is to keep coming, hearing and learning the word. Everybody has to start with a foundation. Hey, listen, everything has to grow. You've got to decide how you're going to grow. You're going to grow low? And the shade's going to come out over souls, baby. Are you going to stay down there and just be runners in the dirt with the coons peeing on you and stuff? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, everyone who hears the words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And then the rain fell and the floods came. The winds blew and slammed against the house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came. The winds blew and slammed against that house, and it fell, and it was a great fall. You best build a solid foundation in your life right now as a Christian, because it's coming. We must keep growing on the rock. That is Christ, our solid foundation. Remember the series I preached, the living foundations, the living, growing foundations. Y'all remember that? That's what we are. I'm going to skip on down. Listen, there are blocks that you put into your life that consist of things that you fool with every day. The words we say, the things we read, the stories we tell, the videos we watch, the shows we watch, the songs we listen to, the decisions we make, the, the simple things every day are blocks that build your life. That's what you put in front of you for your vision. I would write a vision down for my life with some spiritual goals today when I got home. And I would say, I'm going to put the word of God right here. I'm going to put my prayer journal here. And I'm fixing to handle this. So this can be handled. Mm -hmm. Preach it, white boy. What are you going to believe? What are you going to do as a believer in twenty-four to change eternity? What if you die tonight? You're going to go up there. Is that going to test in the fire? Is what you're going? Is what the, you have done going to test in the fire? Because what you've done is going to be put in the fire, and what has some e mm to it sticks. What has some eternal stays? What does not have that? Make some decisions in 24. Somebody say amen. Did you know that many are called to reach people and invite them to church too? I know that some of you have this, that this calling specifically. I expect you to use that. It's a very powerful calling. Don't overlook that. Invite people to church because many of you are called to do it. I don't care about the numbers. You think I care about the numbers and the money? If you think I'm worried about seats, dimes, and butts, you got me messed up. That's not what I'm about. I don't care if every one of you invited one. If we got one saved, we're throwing a monster party next Sunday, dog. I'm going to send Eric to just go buy some stuff. We're just going to party with heaven. 
What's yours? You will never know unless you try, man. And this is what I want you to sear on your heart. I look at it like this. Each time you serve in any single capacity, big or small, listen, you are setting up a soul to be changed forever and for eternity. That says volumes. That says volumes. That, I, I'm just going to end that. Let's go. Listen very closely. The gospel is only good news if it reaches somebody in time. Closing the promise. As I ended in prayer writing this message, the Lord showed me one more thing. The day that we secured this, the day that we knew that we it's going down. You're going to be a pastor, little baby boy. And guess what? You better get your heart right too, girlfriend, because we got stuff to do. The day that happened, the Lord woke me up at 6.30, and I was filled with the Holy Ghost, and I was sitting there. What did I sit there? I don't even get up at 6.30, and I definitely don't pray in the Holy Spirit at 6.30 a.m. But it happened and I was enveloped in it and I couldn't stop. And I walked outside and it was all over me and I almost went down under the power. I showed up here to meet the dude. The dude said, don't worry about it. I ain't worried about your speech here, bro. Don't, pay, don't worry about rent for three months. So with that said, this is what the Lord led me to. He said, I want to lead you back to that promise I gave you that morning. Because it's, it's, it's Vision Sunday. You're starting year four. Let me show you something. I'm almost done. Y'all cool? I'm almost done. I, this, is, this, is, this is the word that he gave me. Deuteronomy 28.2, all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. You best pay close attention to this closing today. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. I love that. When I'm driving to town, I always tell them, blessed am I in the city and blessed in the country. Blessed shall you be the offspring of your body. This is a promise to you. It's the promise for Hill Country Life Church. Blessed shall you be the offspring of your body and the produce of the ground and the offspring of your beast, the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your eating bowl. Blessed shall you be, come on, when you come in and blessed are you when you go out. It says, the Lord shall cause your enemies to rise up against you, to be defeated against you. They will come against you one way and flee before you seven. Get out of here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can't touch me. The Lord commanded the blessing upon you in your barns. And that when you put your hand to it, he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. And he swore to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And then he said, I ain't done with you, little preacher. He kept going. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord will open you for the, oh, the good storehouse, the heavens, to give rain to your land in the season, to bless your work in all the land and the hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord will make you the hand and not the tail. And you will be above. You will not be underneath. You will listen to the commandments of the, uh, of the Lord today. And then he said, I charge you to observe them. He said, listen, you stick to the vision. Don't you waver left and right. I'll make the crooked straight path. I'll, uh, uh, I'll make the crooked ways straight. And I said, man. And then I was like super pumped. I said, Lord, I can't take you talking to me like this no more. Because I'm fat and I'm old and I'm winded. And I was praying. He said, hey, man, look at the last part. It says, do not turn aside. Don't go to the right or left. He said, stick to the vision. It's in your hand. And he says this, look what the Lord has done this morning. As we start year four powerfully today, we answer back, I hear you, Lord. I hear you loud and clear. The truth will set the world free starting right here in this pulpit, if it has to. I know there's truth, there's proof, truth, there's truth preachers preaching right now. So I do not have that type of cockiness knowing. There are preachers out there that are preaching their heart out just like us. And those are going to be the ones that change the world. Because they're sticking to the vision. They're sticking to the gospel. And they are not wavering for anything. And I'm going to end with this. I skipped about a whole chapter. I'm going to end with this. Our vision is to preach the gospel with power to save souls and do whatever it takes to help people grow in the Lord. That's it. Holding it fast and standing firm in faith. And then it's to take the world in Texas for Jesus. I think we're, we're, we're trying to do the best we can and we're doing a good job. 
And, and then that's what I thought we'd do, and I prayed hard, and I sought God. I said, you know what, I'm doing that, Lord, and I'm going to keep doing that. We're all doing it together. Everybody's in. But I want to encourage you to start truly simply speaking with God, too. Because when you truly speak, uh, this is what I want to show you what He told me. Leviticus 19, 23, you enter the land and plants all kinds of tree and food, then you shall count their fruit as forbidden. Three years as shall be forbidden to you, it shall not be eaten. Okay? Weird scripture, right? But I'm with it, I'm listening to him, you know what I'm saying? Then it says, but in the fourth, come on. <laughs> but in the fourth year, all of its fruit shall be holy. An offering of praise to the Lord. And here we go, some in the fifth year, you're going to eat of fruit. So I kept praying because I said, Lord, that's a tough one. It's tough to figure that one out. You've got to keep praying, though. So I kept praying. He said, the fruit of people's foundations are being laid. Sanctification takes time. But it has been planted, and listen, this is what he said, production, maturity is at hand. Do you know what a plant's production maturity means? <laughs> Time for fruit. I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm kind of liking what you're hollering at me. Then he says, then he said, for some it's already here. I said, what? Then... And then I kept going and I kept praying. He said, the fourth and fifth year speak for itself, boy. <laughs> I, then he said, be patient. I said, okay. Then the Lord, I said, man, that was a great word. That Was that a great word? Yes. I said, thank you, Jesus. Then the Lord showed me this. And then he led me to this on Friday in my office. And it really touched me, Deuteronomy 10, 11. It says, then the Lord said, arise, proceed on your journey ahead of the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. He said, last year this church and these saints, they did arise. He said, it took three years. Don't quit now. Hold fast, little preacher. The time of fruit and growth is near. Boy, that lines up with the word. Listen, I'm not done. He led me here then. I was like, this is really good. Isaiah 48, 13. My hand laid the foundation of the earth. And my right hand spread out the heavens, and when I call to them, they stand forth together. I said, that's another weird one. What does that mean? He said, when strong, powerful foundations are laid together by Jesus Christ, that no weapon, plan, disease, despair, hopelessness, addiction, lies, government, state, evil, demonic entities will have a lick of power because no weapon formed against this vision shall prosper. When believers stand forth under a mutual loving, serving, growth atmosphere, finding their niches and callings, doing it with full hearts, living by the word, keeping an atmosphere of honor, moving in the power of the Holy Ghost, worshiping in the truth, you best put your seat belt on because that local church is going to change the world. Then stand back. A local church will be able to run with the vision that's placed before them. The words that were given to you today. I ask you to learn it. Truth 24. Because guess what? We're going to fulfill his vision. And I'm here to tell you the Lord told me yes and amen. He said, boy, I gave you what I needed you. Now go preach vision. And he said, you end it with this. My promises stand upon the vision of Hill Country Life Church with a yes and an amen. Thank you, Jesus. Was that powerful? I was very happy to hear from the Lord. It's always good to hear from the Lord. But we are doing what I preach. And the Lord is happy. Can we get better? Always. Do we need souls to reach? Do we have souls to reach? Then we have a lot to do. But we're getting there. And I want to commend each one of you for sticking with faith. Year four. Everybody in? Raise your hand if you're in. We're all in. Let's, let's pray over this while we have our hands raised. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this powerful word. We ask you to spill it in your blood today. 
And we thank you, Lord, that you change us, that we, that we are vision-minded. But, but not, not, not so much just a vision about a ministry or a vision of somebody, but we are vision-minded on the gospel. We are vision-minded to do your will, that the Father's business is accomplished. And I pray for that in this church. I thank you. We're so grateful for the leaders, Lord, for all the elders, for the lives changed and marriages saved. And we ask all just beautiful things you have done. I am so grateful this morning. But I'm asking you, I'm asking you for God to hear from you. And I'm asking God for you. country.